Hey guys, today I'm going to be explaining the difference between a civil engineer and a structural engineer. A lot of you guys have asked me this question and have been interested to learn more, so in this video I thought I'd give you a full overview and explain everything you need to know. Also, if you're new here, my name is Ben and I'm a structural engineer working and living on the east coast of Australia, and if you find value in this video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing. Alright, so the first question I'll be answering is, what is a civil engineer and what is a structural engineer? Simply put, a civil engineer is someone who designs infrastructure like roads and highways or water and drainage systems. Besides this, they also play a crucial part in the planning and development of new land. Here they work out things like the different ground levels and slopes that are needed so that water runoff is properly managed, and they also ensure that the entire new piece of land will have adequate piping installed for things like water supply and sewerage. This means that they often complete tasks like calculating how much rainfall and runoff is going to be expected during a large storm event, and then planning out a safe route for this water to travel. The way they plan out the way this water travels is through specifying things like the angle and direction that roads and car park slabs need to slope, providing the size and span of open channels, and also through setting out the location, size, and quantity of any culverts. Now, on the other hand, a structural engineer is someone who designs buildings and bridges. And just so I'm clear, when I say design, I don't mean things like the look of the building, I mean things like the structural framing and reinforcement layout, the material specifications, and also the size of the structural members, like the beams and slabs, and the walls and columns. Also, as a bit of a side note, if you are more interested in the look and the feel of structures and you're a bit more on the artsy side, I think architecture is probably going to be more your thing as this is what they're responsible for. Anyhow, some examples of building projects are things like residential houses, industrial warehouses and high rises. And for bridge projects, these can be both big traffic carrying ones and also smaller pedestrian only ones. When it comes to the design of these types of structures, structural engineers need to complete a bunch of technical tasks. For buildings, this includes working out the size and spacing of beams and columns to ensure that the structure can safely carry the weight of the floors and walls above, and also detailing how all these elements connect together. For bridges, this includes calculating the loads from traffic, wind, and even earthquakes, and then design components like girders, piers and abutments to safely transfer these forces to the ground. Now one good example of where civil and structural engineers work together is on a highway design. Here the civil engineers will focus on the entire road and specify things like the geometry, grading and drainage, and the structural engineer will only focus on the design of any overpass bridges along that same highway. In this sort of project the civil engineer will deal with the overall infrastructure and make sure that the road meets broad functional requirements. Some of these things include specifying how sharp the corners will be so that cars can safely turn at high speeds and also determining how steep the road will need to be so that people will be able to see further enough ahead with enough time to react to changes in the road conditions. On the structural side of things all the curves and slopes would have already been worked out and with this information the structural engineers would then begin their work calculating the loads from things like the vehicles, wind and earthquakes and start sizing the members and working out the connection details. Similar to this, another example of where civil and structural engineers work together is on a high-rise building project. In this sort of project, the structural engineer will deal with all the structural elements like the walls, columns and slabs, and the civil engineer will handle the plumbing system, or the more technical term, the hydraulic system. Also, not all civil engineers do hydraulic design, as this kind of falls into a subspeciality of civil engineering, but either way, this is a very common crossover between civil engineers and structural engineers as often there's quite a bit of coordination that needs to happen around all this pipe work. Alright, now that you've got the general gist, let's go over the education and expertise differences. So when it comes to the actual formal education that both civil and structural engineers get from university, it's pretty much the same. Both civil and structural engineers do a Bachelor of Civil Engineering and in most cases you really just take a couple more classes in either the civil or structural related topics. In some parts of the world you might also need to do a master's degree and specialize in either civil or structural engineering, but in Australia, if you've done a four-year bachelor's degree with honors, you don't need to do a master's degree. These things definitely do change around the world, so if you are interested in the requirements in your specific region, be sure to do some research into this so you can get a more definite
definite answer. Anyhow, when it comes to the actual expertise and what sort of design elements civil and structural engineers actually deal with in their career, these things are quite a bit different. Firstly, civil engineers are experts in topics such as hydrology, fluid mechanics and hydraulics, transportation, and also land development. This means they have a deep understanding on things like the distribution and dynamics of water, road design principles and traffic flow optimization, and also grading requirements and procedures for new land. Now, structural engineers on the other hand are experts in areas such as steel, concrete and timber design, wind and earthquake load analysis, and also advanced topics like structural dynamics and composite material behavior. As you can probably imagine, each one of these topics have quite a bit of theory behind them, so ongoing learning and constantly being challenged at work is a big part of being a structural engineer. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video, but I just wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. For those of you that haven't heard of Skillshare, it's the largest online learning community for creatives. On Skillshare, there are thousands of classes led by industry experts across things like design, marketing, productivity, and more. Each class consists of a pre-recorded series of bite-sized lessons that you can complete at your own pace. Most classes take a learn by doing approach to teaching where members are encouraged to create a project while taking the class. And often at the end of the class, people share their project with the community and get feedback. As engineers, I think a bunch of the technical classes on things like project management and programming are really valuable. But I also think that if you have hobbies and things like musical instruments, or art, using Skillshare's classes as a way to have fun or even relax is another really cool use case. I've recently been watching a few lessons on guitar basics and have found them really interesting and a great way to wind down at the end of the day. Anyways, if you're interested in giving Skillshare a go, be sure to check them out using my link in the description as the first 500 people to use my link will receive a one month free trial where you get full access to all of their classes. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. All right, and and lastly, I want to go over some of the different types of civil engineers and structural engineers. Okay, so starting with civil, we have hydraulic, and these people focus on sewerage and drainage design. Then we've got transportation, and these people focus on road and highway design. Next, there's coastal, and the focus here is designing systems to protect shorelines, ports, and harbors from things like erosion, flooding, and storms. And finally, there's geotechnical. I think that geotechnical engineering actually kind of deserves its own classification, kind of like structural engineering does, but for simplicity, this is yet another type of civil engineer. In any case though, geotechnical engineers focus on the classification and design of foundations. Besides this, many of them also get involved in a bunch of geotechnical design elements like piles and various retention systems. All right, and for structural engineering, there's a whole other collection of subspecialties. Here you've got facade engineers who solely focus on, you guessed it, facades. Then you've got forensic engineers who investigate structural failures, determine their causes, and recommend solutions. Next, you've got material engineers whose job it is to test and validate new materials and products. And finally, you've got site engineers is. These people organize and coordinate the actual construction process and are responsible for delivering the project to the client on time. Now, both of these lists definitely aren't complete and are missing other subspecialities of civil and structural engineering, but in general, these are the main ones. Anyways, I hope that you learned something in this video, and if you did enjoy it, you might like this video here where I show you what a day in the life of a structural engineer actually looks like. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.